And without a doubt, the most important inanimate object tool, whatever, whenever we're doing this getting loud business, is a brick wall emitter. That's our final piece, and we're probably going to be pushing it pretty hard um, on the whole grand scheme of things. Now, what I have done is I took a mix that of a country pop chick thing, and I just turned the, the brick wall limiter off. And remember, I always use my limiters on my mix. I don't see any reason to bust it up. In this particular case, I am going to bust it up because I wanted to kind of do a, a shootout and, and kind of show you the differences here. Um, and I can't really do that effectively uh, on the mix itself, not with the speed and precision. Okay, so uh, what I've done, as you can see, here's my mix. I've got quite a few transient spikies there. And uh, that means that the, the limiter... Well, these, th this level will be slammed up kind of like, bruh, well, dang, I wish we would have went further. Anyway, it's going to be slammed to the point where we're just going to clip all this junk right off. Now, and if we sit around and think about it, like, philosophically, it, is it nice to use a, a damaging, modern, disgusting, these damn kids kind of uh, brick wall emitter to slam all that stuff off? Well, it doesn't sound like, in my head, I don't love that idea, but in practice, when I did this mix, that's exactly what I did, and I liked it. And I think I probably went a little bit overboard on the crack of this snare. I don't know if it matches the song exactly. Um, if I could go back, I may turn that off. Then again, I may turn it up. I don't know. I, I, I liked it at the time, so I'm going to go ahead and go with it. Um, we'll call it character. But let's just go ahead and see. Now, the thing is, too, is I met my loudest goals without any problems on this particular mix when I was slamming it. And I like the sound quality. So I think this shows that it is possible to go ahead and you know, leave those transients in and let's limit or deal with them one way or the other. Okay, first, let's take a listen to these and just see how they sound. And this is what I used first was the uh, uh, Universal Audio uh, Max Precision Maximizer. Now, this is part of the UAD package. The uh, Precision Maximizer, um, it's not really uh, known for being a brick wall limiter. No one talks about that really, but it is. But, but it's a colored brick wall limiter in that it has no qualms of saying, hey, we're going to be bold. And has a little shape. Where's it at? has a shape knob here, which uh, kind of like a distortion color. I don't know. It's changing something. Now, um, I guess I'll go ahead and introduce all, them all so we can kind of listen to them sequentially. And next, I have the UAD Precision Limiter, which is quite a bit different. It's designed to be clean, and um, it doesn't do any of that character business. And we do have a, a control for release and the amount of input we shove into it. And uh, I think the rest is just metering, so it's fairly straightforward. Okay, next is the T-Rex brick wall limiter. It's got a million different uh, styles. <clears throat> it uh, it can do, uh, let's see, there's uh, saturations and, and all these various things trying to give it color. And then you've got, uh, yeah, clean. What I've found, I don't know what I'm doing different from everyone else, but clean sounds more distorted than most of them. And so I've had the best luck, and I had the same thing happen with uh the ozone 5 uh limiter um uh, it uh it sounded best to me on clip which i got a, a theory on that we'll talk about a little later and then see we got the uh the sonics limiter which some people debate whether this thing's actually a brick wall limiter but in my experience it does do the brick wall thing but it's got a kind of a lot of weird settings but uh pretty good little gadget and then lastly we have the slate fgx yeah there you go Somebody wants to be on top of everything. Okay. Okay, and this thing's well regarded. What I've done for this is I disabled the compressor, so only the, the brick wall limiter is up. Now, I did not mess with this dynamic perception, uh, this hard, smooth business, or the low punch detail. Those uh, are worth something. And so, um, in a test like this, does it make it fair to leave them at flat? I don't know. And I don't really, I mean, don't take the damn thing too seriously. I'm just kind of showing a concept that you need to be trying out these things in your own studio because there is a difference and not all of them are created equally. And for those of you who are struggling to get your loudness goals met, hopefully this whole video product series has solved all that. But in the event that, you know, if sometimes this is hard and sometimes certain songs present certain challenges that make getting level much more difficult. And so if you can use a limiter that'll get you another decibel or two, then uh, that takes a lot of pressure off you as a mixer and can save you a lot of time. So in other words, it's worth taking uh, an evening or just an hour or whatever you got and uh, download all the demos and really try out these different limiters to find out what stands out to you. Okay, so let's get into the noise making here. Uh, this is my standard, and again, you'll hear that snare crack probably more than I intended. But uh, 
And what I've done is I've just manually set the levels, and I've got on my two bus here, is I use the, the, uh, each limiter as an insert on each track, which that's fine. But um, on the two bus, I've got the uh, TT dynamic range meter so we can see how loudness, how loud we are. Okay, so let's see how we're going. And that's pretty much what I intended. I mixed into that, so that's kind of our reference. And Precision Maximizer is my go-to tool for all this stuff. Okay, now let's switch to the uh, UAD uh, limiter, their clean limiter. And not like a world ender, but there's no doubt about it, that kick is mushing up. And uh, there's just some overall mush in there in general that I'm not in love with. And uh, so right off the bat, I, I don't know why anyone, at least I don't know, I can't figure out a reason why I would want to use this limiter. And granted, that's another factor in this stuff is, is everyone has mixing styles and maybe your particular, I don't know, frequency response that you do, your kind of low end you do. Something may sound different in one limiter and, and work better for you than it does for me. But without a doubt, that, that got mushy. And I didn't hear any of that mush on, on my mix. So, or my, whatever, my, my precision maximizer track. Let's go to T-Rex. That seems like it's a little bit clicky in the snare end. I mean, I've kind of talked about that. Maybe I should have perfected it on the way in. Let's go back to that first reference and see if I've lost my mind or not. I want to see how the snare does, um, and, and maybe I didn't care on that first one. So, Because I know this T-Rex one definitely has that clickiness in the snare. Okay, no doubt about it. There's a lot more like 10K type stuff in this particular uh, snare. And that's the way they're distorting. And again, in, in defense of the T-Rex in this case, I'm using, they have a bunch of different styles. And so, I mean, I guess I can even kind of flip through them. Let's just try Saturation 3. What does that do? I don't know. It's okay. Let's go to clean real quick. We're just kind of playing here. And what you can hear there, and you might have noticed this, the gain reduction meter started working. So they're they're using different, whatever, features. But you can hear the attack time, and more importantly, the release. I can hear it hanging on to that snare a little bit, kind of bringing up some ambience just a bit. Let's go with a longer release. Okay, so now it's pumping. Let's go with a super short one. And this is one reason I don't like to get into all this uh I don't like a lot of knobs on my brick wall emitter. Uh, I got into a discussion with one of the big guys there at, uh, at Isotope about ozone because ozone's uh, brick wall limiter has like a thousand functions. And well, I say a thousand, probably two, but anyway, it has a lot of buttons. And uh, it, when I'm, I don't want to think about my limiting. I'm thinking about a thousand things when I'm doing all this. And, and the limiter is the last thing I want to think about. Of course, I'm operating not in this context where all I have is a, a, a stereo file. I know some of you guys like to render your mixes and then tinker maybe then it makes sense i don't know but for me i've got my full mix i can adjust so it doesn't make any sense at all to need this complicated limiter anyway whenever we turn clean on here on t racks what ends up happening is we're engaged the a few different things inputs always working but now all of a sudden we care about the attack on release times and so now we can start you know trying to, to get get it to uh not pump and not be too uh, fast and uh, it gets to be a real mess and it's just no fun and so for me just going with clip which sounds really negative they should call it i don't know good uh, then uh it, it that seems to work now in this particular case though clip uh lets some of that uh like so that 10k and the snap and the snare kind of stays in there more than i intended it's not a million and if i was using this in the mix i would have adjusted my snare there's no doubt about it I would have knocked a little of that top off with an EQ or something like that, or turned down a parallel compressor, and uh, it would have been fine. So uh, this is a very usable uh, limiter. I have no problem with it. I like it better than I like this UAD limiter, which is just crunched up and offers no option. Okay, on to Sonic's limiter. Where you at? There we go. And 
one thing I'm struggling just with a hair that looks like this one might be just a little bit louder than the others. And there's no good way of doing that because the way these limiters work, it, it just changes. There's not a good um, empirical way to do that, unfortunately. I'm going to knock it down a decibel and see what happens. And again, this one offers a few settings. We have attack release, soft knee, enhance. We got all this junk going. I, I went through a chameleon presets once upon a time on this thing because it has a whole bunch here. And uh, ended up, I found Rock 3, and I was I think it was actually on a electronic music mix. <laughs> and uh, broke those rules. Anyhow, the uh, Rock 3 just stood out to me as being better. I don't really know why. So uh, that particular combination of settings it, it ruins the idea of this being a science you know thing so instead but all i do know is i like the sound of this maybe it might be one percent mushy and if i had this on the two bus i might pull down some of that stuff a little bit i do remember when i was using this uh, on a, quite a few electronic projects a year or two ago that the drums just sounded louder with the limp with this particular limiter than with others and i use it for qu uh, quite a bit for that and it's like that's kind of an interesting perspective but um, for rock stuff and things like that, I didn't. Um, I would might use the uh, the uh, the maximizer here, the precision, the first one, because it had a little extra thing going on, like uh, harmonic content. You're kind of getting to a character tape machine kind of thing going on. But uh, with this, I just liked how my drums pounded, which for house music and trance things like that is just essential. Some of you rocker guys are thinking you have a rock drums pound hard too. No, they don't. They haven't pounded hard in years. Turn on the country station and you'll you'll notice that. How much the rockers are getting their butt kicked it's kind of a, kind of sad but anyway that's another another rant of mine why people are making weenie rock drums but um so anyway uh a really good limiter none of that uh the clicky business of the t-rax limiter and uh, it just sounds pretty cool but again some other preset might be your cup of tea and that might solve our mud problem but either way that's a very good tool and then here we go is the uh the slate fgx let me go ahead and open that first And it, this one snare is a little bit annoying again. It's a little bit too piercing. I don't normally mix with that kind of snare, by the way, just so you guys know. Uh, yeah, I think I got lazy and just used a preset and superior drummers because I had a deadline. But and uh, kind of, well, I talk about this in my my studio business book, uh, surviving and thriving in the BS recording studio business. But uh, sometimes when you're you're kind of on the on the uh, clock, the clock's ticking, you just got to go for it. But and kind of do things you wouldn't normally do. But all right, I'm going to play around here. I'm going back to Sonics because I thought the snare was annoying on the slate one. Oh, baby, yeah, so that, that snare doesn't strike me as annoying in that 10K. And again, I'm using the Audio-Technica MTH-50 or ATH-50 M50, something 50, the studio monitor headphones. Anyway, and uh, so they have a little bit of a top-end boost thing going on like 10, 12K, so that could be another issue. But... Yeah, no doubt about it, that real initial attack is, bothers me um, on this particular track. I think, again, my mix kind of was leaning in that direction, so whatever. But they've got all these little tools here in, in Slate. Like, I got the gain, which I crank up, up quite a bit. And you got this punch business. We, we picked a preset in uh, um, the, some of the others, so maybe we should just grab a preset here and, and adjust for it. And I guess it's, I don't know, I don't see country pop anywhere. It's, oh, Pop Master, let's go with that. And I'm going to turn off this. Of course, you have the compressor here, too, which adds whatever. Of course, it's a very clean compressor, so that's another factor. I'm just going to turn it off. I don't know if that's cheating or not. but And let's see. I'm going to turn it down. And that brings out some of that, that detail button there, I think really adds more to that snare click, which I don't love. But there are times when maybe I would. I don't know, maybe there's metal where sometimes I guess a track gets squashed and that transient gets lost. And it's a mixing thing, you kind of learn your way around that, but you never know. So anyway, I guess none of these really sounded terrible. Uh, again, I didn't like the, the, uh, the UAD uh, limiter, but that didn't really give us any options to compensate. All the rest uh, either gave us a clip mode or gave us some kind of option to uh, uh, deal with our problems in one way or another that we may be hearing. 
Again, I, I believe, though, that if you put one of these on your two bus, you're probably going to be, like, when you're, while you mix, you can always just adjust the mix. Anything gets mushy, well, you just, you can, you know, EQ before it on the two bus or just turn that element down on the track itself. I'm a big proponent of that, and I'm, I'm surprised that the rest of the world hasn't went that way. But what else is new? No one ever listens to me. Blech, poor Brandon. All right, guys, over and out.